Hey everybody, welcome back. We're on Array Methods 11, Part 4 of Module 1, and it's the last lesson in this part. So, filter even elements. You may recognize this as being dangerously similar to filter odd elements, so we're just going to jump right into it. We'll say even elements, and we'll spell it correctly. Return even elements. So our purpose here is we're going to create an array, and we're going to iterate over the input array, and then we're going to push the necessary uh, even elements into it. So i is less than the array.length, i++. Plus plus. So we need to determine if the current element is even. We can do so by checking if the current element, when we apply modulo 2 to it, is equal to 0. In that case, it is an even element, and so we want to push that even element to our even elements array. Even elements dot push array at i. It goes through, every time it comes to one that is even, it'll push it to the even elements array, and then finally we'll return even elements uh, from the function. And we're in good shape. Get length of shortest element. Uh, it should return zero if the array is empty. So there's an edge case for us. So we'll say if array.length is equal to zero, meaning the input array is empty, then we'll just return zero. Uh, yes, yeah, it should return zero. Uh, now, we're going to pick the first one and say that that is the shortest element. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the shortest element, and then at the end we're going to return the length of the shortest element. So we'll say variable shortest is equal to array at zero. Then we're going to iterate over the rest of the array. Theoretically, maybe we should put that like that. This is our edge case, and then this would be the actual methodology of the function. We'll say variable i is equal to 1, i is less than array.length, i++. Plus plus. And, okay, so if the current element length, so if the current element's length is shorter than shortest length, shortest dot length, which is to say we have a variable, we're storing the shortest in it, we're checking the length at this point. So if the length of the current element is shorter than the length of the shortest element, then we have to reassign shortest. So we say shortest is equal to array at i. And then finally, after that's all happened, shortest will contain our shortest element, and we want to return the length of the shortest element. So it's going to be return shortest dot length. So our edge case, pick a shortest as the first one, iterate over the rest, Anytime the current element's length is less than our shortest length, we're going to reassign shortest to be the current element. Once we're all done with the iteration, we know that shortest contains the shortest element in the array, so we return shortest.length, which will give us the length of the shortest element. Excellent. This one is uh, get longest element. If there are ties, it returns the first element to appear. Wow, I don't like that note. That doesn't make any sense. How, how is it going to know if you return the first one? Um, P.S. It won't. Uh, so I'll probably actually just get rid of that. Uh, although I might leave it in there just because sometimes it's good to think about things and discover why you think they're unnecessary or why they shouldn't be there. Because eventually we're going to go from following recipes to writing our own. And at that point it can, be a, it can be good to have some confidence in your ability to parse whether instructions make sense or whether they need some uh, amelioration or um, they need to be made better in some fashion. So we've got an edge case here though. So if Array.length is equal to zero, meaning if the input array is empty, it says that it wants us to return an empty string. Now if we want the longest element, we're going to follow the same pattern we've been doing, which is to say longest is equal to the first element in the array. Then we're going to iterate over the rest of the array, starting at 1, ensuring that i never goes past 1 less than the length of the array. And we say that because the last value of i will be array.length minus 1, which we've gone over several times. And at this point, we're going to say if the current element, ray at i, is greater uh, than longest. Now, the only thing that's wrong with this is that these are strings. So we can't just compare them directly like that, or we're going to get a result that we're not expecting. So we need to check to see if the length of the current element is greater than the length of the longest. If that's the case, we're going to need to reassign longest to be the current element in the array. Now previously, in the problem that we did just above, uh, we were looking for the length of the shortest element. In this case, we are going to be returning the, uh, the actual element itself. So we're going to return longest. We run it, and it works. So thanks for watching. 
Uh, hope you enjoyed this video series. We'll see you again in part five. And uh, no, that's pretty much how we usually end these videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.